Good evening, my dear friends, sisters, families, uh, brothers and sisters, friends all over, and youth also, and children. Today, a happy feast. Today is the feast of the Pentecost. And uh, traditionally, it's thought to be the birthday of the church. So happy birthday to each one of us, because it's the birthday of the church. It's, that's a tradition. When the Holy Spirit came, he formed the church. Uh, let's begin. Uh, I want to speak today uh, about the Holy Spirit a little bit more. We can't exhaust, I can't tell you very, very much because in just 10 minutes you can't give exhaust all that. Let's share a bit, exchange a bit on the Holy Spirit. But let's begin with a prayer to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructed the hearts of the faithful, grant us by the same spirit to be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good evening once again. And... Uh, this morning in the homily I spoke a little of the Holy Spirit. I want to add a little bit more. Uh, we can't in 10 minutes speak so very much. I want to tell you that uh, the Spirit is always thought of uh, as the presence of God, but not as a separate person. All of us, you and me, uh, know that this is one of the core beliefs of our faith, the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Father, we know, is the Creator, Almighty God. The Son was promised by the Father to redeem the world. So Jesus came. We have got images of him in Galilee, in Judea, in Bethlehem, Nazareth. And so we, can, uh, we pray to him in different scenes. That's meditation. We pray to our eternal Father who created us. The Spirit is... Uh, we don't have an image of him, so it's difficult to pray. And we would not have known about his presence except for the fact that this was revealed by Jesus. Jesus revealed to us for the Trinity. This is a pure revelation. There are three persons and one God in the Trinity and that the Holy Spirit is the advocate, our counselor, our helper, the one who's with us. Jesus uh, as I was saying in the morning, uh, he, he was at the end of his, in his priestly prayer, towards the end he was, seemed a little anxious uh, and wanted to go to send the Holy Spirit to be with us. The Holy Spirit is so important. And we gradually uh, are learning more and more of the Holy Spirit. We had a novena which was just completed over here, uh, nine days of talks. We've had a tree room also, uh, preparation. Uh, really, and, and as we reflect and pray, uh, gradually he himself, the Holy Spirit, uh, fills us with the knowledge of himself. I want to point out to you that when Jesus, this is the Bible, uh, when Jesus began uh, his ministry, uh, in Luke 4, we have this, uh, he, there's the temptations, he comes uh, to his own town, Jesus returned to Galilee, he came to his village of Nazareth, where he was being brought up, and he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. And we have in Luke 4:18 uh, onwards, Jesus unrolled the scroll, and you heard this before in the gospel. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives to be released and give sight to the blind, and so on. And this was, uh, as we know, uh, this was from Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll. This is there. The exact words are there also. Isaiah 61. Uh, the, the 61 says, uh, 
61.1 The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, the Lord has anointed me. This is what Jesus said. And Jesus said to the people, this is fulfilled. So the Spirit was on him. Uh, I want to just diver, di digress a bit. Earlier, Isaiah, the prophet who has spoken so much about uh, Jesus, and, I, and you know, you've heard him so often, sometimes he gives very accurate pictures of what's going to happen. Uh, and he said, this is what he says in chapter 11, Isaiah, it's about 600 years, 650 years before Jesus. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root, and the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. And then uh, it again describes that he will be full of the spirit. And here in Isaiah, he gives uh, really the gifts of the spirit, which even now we uh, talk about. Uh, this, he'll have this, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and so on. Uh, when we give confirmation, the bishops give confirmation, uh, one of us, uh, this is our, uh, our, our sermons normally to the children being confirmed are about this, that you're, these are the fruits uh, of the Spirit. Uh, you'll get these gifts, wisdom, understanding, fear of the Lord, uh, and so on. Now that's uh, sort of what the Spirit does. Jesus had the fullness of the Spirit and therefore he had it in abundance. We have the gifts of the Spirit and they produce fruits. The fruits of the Spirit, uh, St. Paul speaks often of the Spirit. Don't forget, St. Paul, he was not there when the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, but afterwards he was, received the Holy Spirit. But he was in continuous contact with the apostles and the disciples, and therefore he experienced with himself the fruit of the Spirit. In himself, he felt the enthusiasm, the fire, the courage, the fearlessness, uh, the wisdom, the understanding which uh, God gives, the Spirit gives, he experienced. And he often spoke, and in Galatians 5, this is an important text, 22, he gives the fruits of the Spirit, or the gift, the fruits of the Spirit. This, uh, this, his own letter, the, the Galatians means St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now, when we were speaking, hearing the first reading all these days, we heard of Paul's trips to Corinth, to Philippi, to Galatia, and then is to go back and write letters to them. Now, this letter is one of the letters to Galatians, and he says over here, uh, 5.22, uh, he says, uh, Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. And that's what he begins with. He says that uh, spirit of good and evil are fighting. And the, the Holy Spirit, number 22, produces this kind of fruit. This is very much quoted, so I'm reading it to you. Uh, he, he, the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, now, these uh, 12 fruits which Paul speaks of in Galatians are often referred to as fruits of the Spirit. Uh, sisters and brothers, you know, my friends, uh, this is not uh, really natural gifts. There are natural gifts and there are supernatural gifts from the Spirit. A person may be naturally kind because that's his nature, upbringing, environment, family. Uh, but there, there, that's, that nature, that kindness, which he has natural gift, helps him in his human relations. St. Paul is speaking of the gift of the Spirit which helps him or helps her to go for eternal happiness, to helps him or her for salvation, for building up the kingdom of God. So that's, those are the gifts of the Spirit. Let, let's ask ourselves and ask the test. Love. Do, are we able, am I able to love my enemies? Am I able to love somebody to, who hurt me? Am I able to pray for somebody who is persecuting me. Jesus said that in the Gospel. Now these are strengths, gifts given by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God's presence in us. He is sent by the Father. Jesus said, I am always with you. 
And Jesus is present with us through the Holy Spirit. Present in the Eucharist sacrament, God is present in us through the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians, uh, that's the second reading of this morning's Mass, and I won't read it now here, they speak of the many gifts which people have, prophecy, teaching, wisdom. Now, people have different gifts, and we see that in the church also. Each of you has got different gifts, but it says these, all these gifts come from the Spirit. The idea, the same theological principle, friends, is that God is giving us these gifts they are surfacing in us to build this kingdom, to strengthen the, world, uh, strengthen the church, strengthen the world, make the world a place as God wants us to. Uh, in that same the famous uh, letter of St. Paul to the Quran, 13, where love is patient, love is kind. You've heard that so often, uh, either reading at Mass or at weddings very often you've heard that. But that's from, again, Paul says, all this is from the Spirit. That's the most important gift. Uh, sisters, uh, brothers, uh, you know, this, uh, the Holy Spirit is an essential part of our lives for our holiness. Uh, Pope, uh, brothers here, Pope Francis has written an encyclical, uh, the Apostolic Exhortation, the Gaudete et Exultate. Uh, this was written, a call to holiness. And in this was a small one, he speaks again of how it's important for us to have the Holy Spirit to run our lives. It, and this is a very simple book, maybe one day we'll speak about it. Uh, he speaks of how ordinary people, there are saints next door, uh, a mother taking care of her sick child, the Holy Spirit is helping her, strengthening her. And she's a saint, uh, uh, Francis says, because the Holy Spirit has given her that gift which she's allowed to fruition. The Holy Spirit is in us and it's important that we pray to Him. Pray to Him to Transformers as transformed the apostles. The early church needed lots of uh, visible presence of the Holy Spirit because it was growing. Now the church has grown. There is no need of such great visible presence. Whenever there's need, the Holy Spirit does show it and people, you experience it, I experience God's assistance in our lives. But uh, I was mentioning it to you on all important decisions. This is my uh, advice to you. On all important decisions of your life, pray to the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to help you. Uh, I confess, see, I myself forget, I, I pray in general, but I pray to the Holy Spirit, I say, helping God. Ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you, give you give the gifts of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, to see the situation and how to take a prudent and wise decision. I said, we do that for all decisions in the church, in the liturgy, for the conclave election of the Pope, Whenever the election of a general, provincial, the chapter meets, they pray to the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and then the, they begin the voting. Uh, when, when there is the ordination of priests, ordination of a bishop, it's the Holy Spirit who really is got to come on that person through the instrumentality of the ordaining minister. That's the hymn sung. So in our personal lives also, you and uh, after this uh, exchange convinces me that I too should do it more, much more often. We should pray to the Holy Spirit regularly for all decisions. We take so many decisions, you and I, uh, for, for the family you take, take the diocese, for the parish, uh, big decisions, small decisions, doesn't matter. Important that we have the Holy Spirit with us, important that we allow Him to take more and more control of our lives, Important that we understand who He is. This Navina has brought us closer to Him, which we had just finished. And I'm sure, uh, don't end it with the Navina today. Now, continuously pray to the Holy Spirit, read about Him, try to understand what He says. Thank you very much. And I'm sure this Holy Spirit uh, will really strengthen us as He's helping us even in these days to come uh, to have strength. You've got to pray to Him now. Pray to the Holy Spirit to help us to see how to go ahead in our lives during this pandemic and uh, after the pandemic, after the lockdown is over, how to run our lives. Pray continuously to Him. Sure, you'll feel His difference as I will feel His difference. Let's go now to a few questions. Uh, I want to begin... Uh, 
Uh, the first one, I want to thank you for asking the question, but your question is already answered. This is uh, Shiana De Silva from Bandra. Your Eminence, please, could you include the topic on the Holy Spirit in the catechesis? We are used to praying to the Father and to Jesus. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, we feel a bit lost. I feel we still do not know how to connect the Holy Spirit and pray to Him. Uh, you had a catechesis on the Holy Spirit. Uh, he, he, no, mine is very, very brief, but the novena, uh, once in the evening. And if, I hope you've not missed it, Sienna. But if you missed it, it's on YouTube still. There are talks nine days and also uh, after the Mass every day. Uh, Father Michael was giving a short novena and a little input. I want to go back to the, again, to another, another question. This is from Divya Nancy Tirki uh, from Delhi. Uh, St. Montfort Parish. Uh, yes, I know your parish. I've been to your parish uh, way back. Uh, this is also, I think, that uh, dealt with. If possible, can you please guide people like me by taking a short session on inner peace, how to invite the Holy Spirit into our lives? Uh, I pray to Him. Uh, uh, pray to Him more and more, uh, really, uh, Divya. And, and you'll then begin to experience His presence. You'll begin. Uh, you, you, we will miss the Holy Spirit, but He's not there. We take Him for granted. Then, then also you've asked, inner peace, how to attain it through God's Word or God's blessing. The only one really pray to the Holy Spirit and try to align your mind to the Holy Spirit. But we'll speak about this a little bit more. Uh, Father Godfrey's is uh, on Fridays, a little bit of inner peace. And also there will be again other sessions. And how to meditate on the Word of God. Now, I want to mention to you that... Uh, Divya, there are different ways of prayer. I mentioned that before. There is vocal prayer where you use words. There is mental prayer where you really are reflecting on God, but you don't use formula like the Our Father, Hail Mary, Angelus. Uh, mental prayer, you think of God. Uh, now, Father Emmanuel has been leading you uh, on Mondays, I think, after the scripture talk with a Lectio Divina. That's one form which is made popular, particularly by Pope Benedict, was uh, very keen that the church gets into Lectio Divina. He spoke a lot about it. But there's the, there's the Ignatian method of, me of meditating, where you think of a place and then you put yourself there. Uh, there is also the contemplation, where you're sitting in the presence of God. There are lots of these. This also gives you inner peace. Uh, now, uh, we'll gradually give you other, I'm going to speak to different types of uh, meditation, not just the one. And, and so they are exposed, and then each one chooses according what to what appeals him. Contemplation is sitting in the presence of God. The saints had different, there is so much, there are many methods. But thank you for the question, very interesting. Now this third question from uh, Nambia from Malaysia. Uh, I was just talking to Father from Malaysia uh, a few days ago on a video conference. I know your place, I've been there, I gave a retreat in your country. Uh, last week, Father spoke about family as a mini church and activities to promote the concept of Christian family. I hope something similar from the context of the Catholic faith for single people or people who are alone in life's journey, sometimes not out of choice. The church's emphasis on family can be an extremely lonely place for people who are alone in life. Now, I, and, and you, you've carried on. Uh, you know, uh, Nambia, I, I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you uh, this, uh, that it can be uh, difficult. That which we are fo focusing a lot on the church, the domestic church, the family as being a domestic church. That's a theological concept that God is present and it's a church domestic means in the home. A domesticated animal is something which is in the home. No? So that's a domestic church, a church in the home. But uh, and for, for the church, there should be a community. I would hardly be able to call you as an individual a church because the church is always a community. But does not mean that you don't, you don't have an important role to play. Uh, this, I think this week itself on Thursday, or you will get a talk on uh, lay, lay apostolate. It's very important uh, that uh, you have a role to play in the church. You've got to be a missionary disciple. I think you have a vocation to really work for the Lord in, as a missionary disciple. And there's lots to be done, lots to be done. I also have been reflecting and I want to share with you that uh, I mentioned it during the last Synod in Rome. We haven't followed it up. This is 
uh, secret. Uh, I mentioned we, we, we there were, and I was surprised that uh, two other bishops, one from Australia, another one from Europe, one from America. There were three other bishops who mentioned that they were thinking of it themselves. I was wondering whether we could have some association of elderly women uh, who are single, and then they join together, feel a certain amount of. Uh, Sorority, I can't say fraternity, sorority, so that they all feel together. But uh, important question, valuable, and uh, don't give up. You've got to work for the church. If you're not the domestic, it does not mean that uh, you're not. Let's go on. Uh, next question. The one thing that this is from Mr. Zenon Pereira. The one thing always comes to my mind that when we pray, we often say our Lord Jesus Christ, our God Jesus, our Lord, our God Jesus Christ. With this, many of us forget the difference that God and Jesus are different. Now, uh, of course, we may do this unconsciously. Uh, now, Zenon, uh, I would not say that God and Jesus, I, I understand what you mean, but the expression God and Jesus is different uh, is, may not be theologically fully accurate because Jesus is God. So when you pray to God, you're praying to Jesus. When you pray to Jesus, you're praying to God. Uh, now, I understand what you mean. Father and Son are different persons. Now, this is a mystery. Uh, honestly, you will not understand it. I will, it's the Feast of the Trinity next uh, week, and so we'll perhaps talk about it then, a little bit then. But uh, this is a mystery. Uh, pray to the Father, pray to Jesus, imagining him, and pray to the Holy Spirit also. Uh, but don't feel guilty. There's the, there is... Uh, I know you, you might imagine there's some rivalry between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, all are one, totally one, uh, every now and then, depending on how, what movement of the Spirit is inside you. Next question, uh, Mr. Avertano Fernandez. I find myself weak in faith. I give, 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 my, give in to anxieties, worries, fears, uh, fall into panic. How can I overcome? Uh, I would say, Avertano, I'm happy you asked the question. Uh, many, you're, you're not the only one. Many, many, many are feeling this. I want to tell you, I'm aware that people feel this. People are having trouble and feeling lonely, depressed because of the circumstances. Uh, I would say two things. The present circumstances are bound to lead people into anxiety, worry, depression. It's normal. Your faith is holding you up. The Spirit will strengthen you. Therefore, pray to the Spirit. The, today's uh, Feast of Pentecost, pray to the Spirit, you'll feel better. If, however, Avartanus, you're feeling this also normal times outside the lockdown, then if you get into anxiety, you might need help. Uh, counselor, the father who gives talks on uh, Friday, he's got a counseling session, Prafulta. He, uh, you can count, contact him. Uh, Contact somebody just for a little little counselling will probably help you to get out of it. We are getting uh, out of time. I'll run just through two uh, quick questions and then we'll end up. Miss Sarita Nazareth. Sarita, I think I know who you are. Uh, I, has there been, from Go, I think, has there been an official change in the old hymn, now not sung, the older people occasionally sing it, daily, daily sing to Mary, uh, sing my soul, a praise is due, all her feasts, her actions, worship. I have come across a version that reads, all her actions, honor. This is an official change. Could this be known more publicly? Uh, no, Sarita, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, other people also may have the answer, uh, same in their mind. Uh, it's not changed officially, so there's no question about it, and therefore not been announced. However, I agree with you that the wor word worship it may not be fully uh, appropriate when we speak to... Um, Mary. But understand, you're worshipping the actions. The word worship is you a little poetically. means we, we really, a boy tells a girl, sometimes I worship you. I, I think I've seen that in movies. Doesn't mean really worship a person like God. Worship is only owed to God. So Mary, we honour her, venerate her. Worship is only God. And therefore, in an official hymn, maybe not very appropriate. But it is, it's a poetic language. Doesn't mean theologically what you're saying. And I'll take a last one, last question. Where, where Richard and Helena D'Souza, one, you, two questions you've got. One is about uh, wine. I think I answered that, uh, that why you receive only the host, not wine. 
body and blood of Jesus, yes, wine, for convenience sake. Our, our numbers are so big that it would be very difficult to organize. Some places I know, Europe, America, I've seen, I've myself uh, presided over Eucharist there very often, and I've seen that. Uh, one, one question you've asked, why does a Sunday Holy Mass is be limited to a 60-minute six, six, period? Uh, you want it longer than 60. Uh, well, I, I want to tell you uh, honestly that this is, it should be really, the Mass should be a uh, celebration, Richard and Helena. It should be, uh, there should not be any constraints at March. There should be no reason for you to look at your watch to see it's too short, too long. That, uh, it's really, when you're, when you're with a friend, you don't look at your watch to see uh, how long you are. That you should not do that with God. Uh, in our parish, <laughs> it is 60 minutes because the next Mass has got to be after one hour. Uh, that's a problem. And uh, you've got about at least uh, 10 minutes, 7 minutes for people to go out, next group to come in, otherwise there's going to be confusion. And if this next Mass begins late, the third Mass will be later because of logistics that is uh, But uh, really, uh, don't look at your watch. Uh, and I hope your Masses are. I'm, I'm encouraged by your question. That means you're, you're happy with your Eucharist. In your, whichever parish you are, in Bombay or outside, I'm happy about your parish priest, your priest giving you interesting mass. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you next uh, Sunday once again. Another catechesis and a few more questions. I'm sorry that the, the time gets over so fast, but uh, what to do? Time. Tempus fugit, they say in Latin, time flies. Once again, happy feast and we'll pray to the Holy Spirit. We'll go for to the chapel, down to the cathedral, pray to the Holy Spirit. We'll pray for each other. Keep well. God bless you. One family. We spend a few moments adoring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. We adore you, O Lord. We praise you, we glorify you, we ask you to come into our homes, into our hearts. Today we celebrate the feast of Pentecost, remembering the day when the Holy Spirit came manifestedly to the group of apostles and disciples waiting in the upper room as Jesus had told them. He had given them a mission to go and preach the gospel, the good news to all men all and all women all over the world. 
to the ends of the earth he had said making them my disciples baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit but he told them before that don't leave galilee go over there and wait waiting it was so important that the holy spirit come forcefully on them this group of first disciples of our lord be bonded together by the presence of god in their lives that they become one communion they become one body they become the church and they go out now with the mandate to spread the gospel jesus you know we know you've heard how much the these first apostles and disciples were transformed and got courage as a result of the holy spirit being with them strengthen us also strengthen our homes also give us the gifts of the holy spirit there is experience in our persons the fruits of the holy spirit love patience above all peace peace of mind peace of heart peace in our relationships peace in the world the peace which you came to give us peace in our home may the holy spirit always be our strength our bond of unity inspire our minds move our hearts and strengthen our wills to be your disciples Lord Jesus your spirit inspired all scriptures and now we pray to you in the words of psalm 104 that all that i am praise the lord O Lord my God how great you are you are robed with honor and majesty you are dressed in a robe of light you stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens you lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds you make the clouds your chariot you ride upon the wings of the wind the winds are your messengers the flames of fire are your servants o lord what a variety of things you've made in wisdom you've made them all the earth is full of your create creatures here is the ocean vast and wide teeming with life of every kind both large and small See the ships sailing along and leviathan which you made to play in the sea. They all depend on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them. They are richly satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their bread they die turn to dust When you give them your breath life is created and you renew the face of the earth May the glory of the Lord continue forever The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made The earth trembles at his glance the mountains smoke at his touch i will sing to the lord as long as i live i will praise my god to my last breath may all my thoughts be pleasing to him for i rejoice in the lord let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth let the wicked disappear forever let all that i am praise the lord praise the lord
having prayed to God to the Eucharist in the words of the psalm let us now recite a litany, litany to the Holy Spirit on this feast of Pentecost our responses have mercy on us Lord 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 have mercy on us God the Father of heaven have mercy on us God the Son Redeemer of the world have mercy on us God the Holy Spirit have mercy on us Holy Trinity one God have mercy on us divine essence one true God have mercy on us spirit of truth and wisdom have mercy on us spirit of holiness and justice have mercy on us spirit of understanding and counsel have mercy on us spirit of love and joy have mercy on us spirit of peace and patience have mercy on us spirit of longanimity and meekness have mercy on us spirit of benignity and goodness have mercy on us love substantial of the father and the son have mercy on us love and life of saintly souls have mercy on us fire ever burning have mercy on us living water to quench the thirst of hearts have mercy on us our response now is deliver us o holy spirit deliver us o holy spirit from all evil deliver us o holy spirit from all impurity of soul and body deliver us o holy spirit from all gluttony and sensuality deliver us o holy spirit from all attachments to the things of the earth deliver us o holy spirit from all hypocrisy and pretense deliver us o holy spirit from all imperfections and deliberate faults deliver us o holy spirit from our own will deliver us o holy spirit from slander deliver us o holy spirit from deceiving our neighbors deliver us o holy spirit from our passions and disorderly appetites deliver us o holy spirit from our inattentiveness to thy holy inspirations deliver us o holy spirit from despising little things deliver us o holy spirit from debauchery and malice deliver us o holy spirit from love of comfort and luxury deliver us o holy spirit from wishing to seek or desire anything other than thee deliver us o holy spirit from everything that displeases thee deliver us o holy spirit most loving father forgive us divine word have pity on us holy and divine spirit leave us not until we are in possession of the divine essence heaven of heavens lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world send us the divine consoler lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world fill us with the gifts of thy spirit lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world make the fruits of the holy spirit increase within us come o holy spirit fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of thy love send forth thy spirit and they shall be created and thou, thou shalt shall renew, renew the, the face, face of the earth let us pray o god who by the light of the holy spirit instructed the hearts of the faithful grant us by the same spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation make this prayer through christ our lord amen, amen.
we'll now have the benediction Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we beseech you, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may ever experience within us the fruit of your redemption, who lives and reigns. God, forever and ever. Amen. The divine praises, blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit the Paraclete, blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary, most holy, blessed be her holy and immaculate conception, blessed be her glorious assumption, 
Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. just had an adoration, praised, adored the Eucharist, praised God, prayed to the Holy Spirit. I invite you at the end of the month of May, it's the month of Our Lady, to join me in this prayer to Our Lady for May. This is composed by the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and he told us that uh, covering letter that he would be saying this every day in union with all the people who are also praying this prayer on this occasion during this pandemic. Let's try to put it on your screens, but at least in spirit, join me as I say this prayer. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey, to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and we seek refuge under your protection. Virgin, Mother, Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amidst this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. At times are buried in a way that grieves them deeply. Be close to those who are concerned for their loved ones who are sick and who, in order to prevent the spread of the disease, cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences for the economy and unemployment. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end and that hope and peace may dawn anew. Plead with your Divine Son as you did at Cana, so that the families of the sick and the victims be comforted and their hearts be opened to confidence and trust. Protect those doctors, nurses, health workers and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency are risking their lives to save others. Support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity and continued health. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day and to priests who in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research that they may find effective solutions to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude and generosity they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life and may devise social 
and economic solutions inspired by far-sightedness and solidarity. Mary Most Holy, stir our consciences so that enormous funds invested in developing and stockpiling arms will instead be spent on promoting effective research on how to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and to recognize the bond that unites us so that in the spirit of fraternity and solidarity we can help to alleviate countless situations of poverty and need. Make us strong in faith, persevering in service, constant in prayer. Mary, consolation of the afflicted, embrace all your children in distress and pray that God will stretch out his all-powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course. To you, who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope, do we entreat ourselves, entrust ourselves, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a lovely evening.